Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and I have a fun quilt pattern for you today. We're gonna walk you step by step on how to make my quilt of inspiration. <laughs> for short, I call it my pray love quilt. But yes, it's a quilt of words of inspiration. I'm gonna walk you through the pattern in this video and if you are a Patreon, don't go to Etsy to grab this pattern. It is your free March pattern. So go over to Patreon, grab all your files and you can follow along. And uh, if you're not a Patreon and you would love to make this quilt, I'm going to put a link to my Etsy shop down below. Now let's go ahead and get started. I love this quilt. I designed it about six months ago and it's been patiently waiting till I had time to get to it. And y'all, I got to knock out a couple of birds with one stone. I don't like to say that. I have a bird. <laughs> don't tell Poppy. But I've always wanted a blue and white quilt, so I was able to finally get my blue and white quilt. And a few months ago, I quilted a quilt for my cousin Nora for her wedding. And I had purchased an awesome pantograph of praying hands from Urban Elements. When I quilted her quilt, I loved the quilting design so much that I wanted to be able to use that pantograph in a quilt of my own one day. So I used it and I love it so much. You'll get to see a close up of that quilting design. I'm not a sponsor of Urban Elements, uh, but I love their pantographs. And so uh, I'll put a link to the pantograph that I'm using that I bought and paid for down in the description box below so that you can check it out if you're interested in that. They do a paper version too. So all of those who want to map out the quilting and do it by machine, sit down machine, you could still do that. You don't have to have a digital copy. All right, y'all, <laughs> enough of the talking. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start by cutting the center piece for this background. It's a fairly large piece. And I would like to do it without any seams, so I'm going to show you how. To cut the center panel for this quilt, we're going to need two yards of fabric. We're going to fold that right in half. From the folded edge, we're going to count over 28 and a quarter inches, and we're going to trim off the extra part of those two yards. Just like that, that's going to give us our length of 56 and a half inches. So there's the length of our panel and that is cut. And now from this piece, we're going to put that right back down the way it was. We're going to turn it the other way and we're going to cut the width of this center panel. It needs to be a total of 36 and a half inches wide. So from the folded edge, we're going to line it right back up on our mat. We're gonna measure over 18 and a quarter inches and trim the width of this center panel. And this creates one solid piece that we're gonna applique our letters to. Now that we have the very center panel cut for the middle of our quilt, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and create each one of the letters that go on that center panel. Now, one of my favorite things to do is raw edge applique and that's how I'm going to be creating my letters. So uh, as part of this pattern, there is a zip file. If you have a cutting machine and want to use your cutting machine to cut your letters out, there are SVGs for each one of these letters and you can certainly use your cutting machine to cut them all out. There's also, a, as part of this pattern at two separate files, okay? Depending on what kind of method you wanna use to cut out your letters, if you're not using a cutting machine, there is a mirror image set of templates. You can print just this file if you're using like Heat & Bond Lite or Heat & Bond Ultra, any fusible product like that to do raw edge applique. You wanna use the mirror image templates. And then if you wanna use freezer paper, I included a separate file so you can just print this one and not waste all of the paper. And the right side set of templates is the one you want to use to uh, use freezer paper for your applique. Okay, so for this quilt, I've decided I'm just gonna use Heat and Bond Light. I just need the mirror image set of templates. 
you're going to need five different quarter yards of fabric. Each one of your words, or you know, <laughs> it's your quilt, make it however you want. If you want each one of your words to be a different color of fabric, then you'll need five different quarter yards of fabric. If you wanted to use all the same fabric, that is absolutely fine. You would need uh, about a yard of fabric. Really, you could probably fit all of these letters onto a yard of fabric, uh, if you're careful, or a yard and a quarter. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make each one of mine different. So I have five different quarter yards of fabric here that I'm going to cut my letters out of. I have a piece of heat and bond light and so it's just super easy y'all because these templates are mirror imaged. All I have to do is trace them right onto my heat and bond, not the bumpy side, the smooth side, and then uh, roughly cut them out and fuse them onto the back side. Whoops, I didn't mean to move that camera. The back side of my fabric and cut each one out. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time. I will be cutting mine out manually by hand. They're bigger letters, so I'll have an easier time doing that. But you can see right through that uh, heat and bond light. I'm just going to trace each one of the letters, fuse them onto my fabrics, and cut out all of my words. Going through the process of tracing each one of my words onto the heat and bond, I used right at two yards and I was being really conservative. If you're going out to purchase fusible, even though the pattern calls for two yards, you might want to actually purchase like two and a half to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm tracing each one of my words, fusing it onto the back side of my fabric and cutting each one of the letters out. Once I do this for all my words, we're going to play around with the placement. Once you have all of your letters, your words cut out, we're going to go ahead and position them on the background fabric. Now I am up close because I want you to pay attention to that little line that's running right down the middle of my quilt. I measured over to the middle 18 and a half inches and I made myself a reference mark from top to bottom with a heat erasing pen to help me center each one of my words. See that line? That line will disappear once I fuse all of these pieces and I run my iron over that pen. It'll just disappear but that helps me center my word onto the background. Now this part might be helpful if you have a design wall or a floor space or a table that's big enough that you can lay flat the center panel fabric and then position each one of your words. I just have mine pinned. They're just pinned right to the design wall so that I can position each one of my words. And once I get the layout of my words exactly the way I want it, I'm gonna give myself a reference mark around the bottom of each one of my letters. So that when I take all of these letters off of this center panel and move over to the iron, I won't lose my place. I'm just going to mark right at the bottom of each one of my words, just like this, giving myself a little reference mark so that I can easily line up these letters once I move everything over. And I'll show you what that looks like once I start fusing. But it's nice to go ahead and... Uh, Give yourself some reference marks so that everything is evenly spaced out. Sorry, I'm moving around holding my camera. <laughs> so that looks pretty good. I might move some of the letters a little tiny bit more, but then I'm going to start marking them and fusing them in place. Moving over to the iron, you can see where I marked with the heat erasing pen, just the bottom portion of where these letters will line up. So I am eliminating all the guesswork. <laughs> and because I'm going to have to shift this panel around onto my pressing board in order to press down some of the longer words, I wanted to eliminate uh, any of the guesswork and have my spacing just the way that I had previously lined it out. So now I can just line up each one of my letters to that little reference mark and it completely erases away once 
the heat from the iron touches it. We're gonna repeat this process until you get to this point right here where each one of your letters is fused in place and then we start sewing. Now before we move over to the sewing machine, let's talk about the different ways that you can stitch down your applique. Now there's several different ways that you can do it. You can stitch it down now so that all of your stitches are hidden in the middle of your quilt or you can fuse all these pieces down Finish making the rest of your quilt top, layer your quilt, baste it, and stitch down your letters as part of the quilting. And certainly that would be the fastest way to stitch down your letters, right? Well, because I've used some lighter fabrics, see that word quilt? That fabric did not want to play well with the white background. So I really felt like I wanted to do a satin stitch, a really small, thin, solid border around each one of the letters to kind of break it away from that white background and make the word more uh, easier to see and easier to read. So using a satin stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and do that part now and I'm gonna bring you along for just a little part so that you can see that. My center white fabric was a white cotton muslin that I picked up at Joann's. It is super smooth and silky feeling, but because of that slinky, smooth, slick feeling, I really felt like because I'm using a denser satin stitch that I needed to use a strong stabilizer on the backside to keep that background from puckering up and shrinking up around those letters. So for this quilt, I've used a cutaway stabilizer. It's a medium weight cutaway stabilizer. And with that stabilizer, you do exactly what it says. You stitch your stitches and then you flip it over and you cut away the extra so that it doesn't add any thickness to your quilt, but that, that strength from the interfacing still stays in your quilt project. So that's what I'm doing. I have the interfacing underneath my piece when I bring it over to with the sewing machine. I'm gonna do a satin stitch, but you could do a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, I really wanted to do a blanket stitch, but that fabric right there was calling for a, sa a satin stitch. But a blanket stitch would look awesome and all of those stitches would be so much faster than a satin stitch. So this is gonna take me a while. I'm gonna bring you along for part of the process and then we'll move forward. A lot of this is gonna be in your way. I tried to find a good camera position that all of this extra quilt wasn't gonna be in your way. And there just really isn't a great position to show you close up and to move all of this quilt around. does give you an idea though of what you're gonna be working with as you stitch down your letters. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, and all of this, this is why we're gonna go ahead and stitch the letters down now because after we add the borders to the center panel, it's only gonna be even larger and more fabric to fit in your throat space, right? So if we stitch them down now, we have less of this in this. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this and we're going to stitch the letter R. Now watching this back on the replay, I'm like, wow, my machine is so fast. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome if the satin stitch really went by this quick? But no, I like to keep it totally honest with you. This is sped up eight times faster so that we could move through this. But, uh, Keeping it real with you, it took me a good solid day to stitch down each one of these letters. And uh, that's mainly really because I take my time and I don't go as fast as my machine will let me because I really want to make sure that I catch all of the edges and that my stitches are nice and pretty. So I like to take my time, turn on some music and stitch away. Now I wanted to show you one of the reasons why I decided to go with the 
satin stitch for this quilt is because of this fabric here. And I wanted to give you a good idea of how that satin stitch, just like that, helps separate that fabric from the background. I think the satin stitch was much needed in this quilt, even though it took me a good solid day to stitch down each one of these letters. Now, once you're done sewing down each one of your letters, we're ready to move on to assembling the borders and getting those onto our quilt top. So let's start with the first border that you see, the four inch pieced border. You're going to cut 50 four and a half by four and a half inch squares. To do this, I want mine to be the same colors as the words that I've used in that center panel. So I have five different quarter yards of fabric. So these are my fabrics for my four inch pieced border. From each one of these quarter inch pieces, I'm gonna cut 10 four and a half by four and a half inch squares and I'm gonna arrange them so that they are alternating around my quilt in the center, okay? The very first thing we're going to do is assemble the top and the bottom borders. And so you need nine of your four and a half inch squares. Assemble those with a quarter inch seam allowance and press them. And then we're attaching them to the top and the bottom of our quilt panel, the center portion of our quilt. Then you're going to piece together 16 of those four and a half inch squares to form the side borders, the left and the right sides. And then those get attached to the center portion of this quilt. Remember to keep your quarter inch seam allowance all the way through. Press your seams as you're going along before you add your borders to that center panel. Make sure you press your seams. Again, we're assembling the top and bottom first attaching those to the center, and then we're going to attach the left and the right four inch pieced border. The very next border that we're going to add is a two inch border. So from a half a yard of fabric, you're gonna cut six strips that are two and a half inches wide. You're gonna join them together like you're making binding, but this is gonna be a thin little border. It's hard to see mine because I used a light fabric. It's gonna be a thin little border, one long continuous strip. The reason I do that is because on this border, instead of attaching it to the top and bottom first, I like to start with the left and right sides. So you'll attach your thinner two inch border, or two and a half, it's cut two and a half. Start on the left and right and attach those and press them. And then you will attach the top and bottom. And then the very last part of this quilt is a four inch border that goes all the way around. See mine is the dark blue. That's gonna really frame in this quilt really nice. So for this four inch border, you need a full yard of fabric. Again, you're gonna cut six strips from that yard of fabric that measure four and a half inches wide. And again, I like to join all those pieces together like I'm assembling binding but it's your border and I like to start with the left and right sides first and then attach the top and bottom. And once you've done that, you're all done assembling this quilt top. I think the longest part of this quilt, making this quilt is probably stitching all of the letters down. <laughs> so once you've attached your border, we're gonna talk about the quilting. Alrighty, let's talk about the quilting of this quilt. If you have watched many of my videos, then you know I like to be honest with you. I like to be transparent and open and tell you 100% of what is on my mind. When I designed this quilt, it was on a computer, small screen laptop, and uh, 56 inches by 70, what is it, uh, 70? 76, 56 by 76. That did not seem very big when I was designing the quilt. And then I made the quilt top and I'm like, wow, that's pretty huge. It's not a twin size quilt, but it's a generous throw size quilt, right? So when I was designing this, I thought, well, this will be a great wall size quilt and I'll sit down with my Juki and have some free motion quilting time. 
you know, I kind of designed this quilt so that it had lots of uh, space to do some really fancy free motion quilting around the words. And then I made the quilt top and I'm like, yep, I think I'm just going to do a pantograph. <laughs> Uh, it turned out a little bit bigger in real life than what I thought it was going to when I was designing it. So in order for me to get straight to using this quilt pretty quickly, I've changed my mind from quilting on my Juki, which is totally doable. But I'm going to go over and use the long arm and use this pantograph. I'm going to show you what the, what the design I came up with, with that praying hands pantograph what it's going to look like that's the quilting yes I am so excited and because I've been wanting to use this pantograph on a quilt that I'm going to keep for myself this is a perfect opportunity I mean it kind of goes with the theme of this quilt right so why not use it but this quilt is definitely a quilt that you can quilt on your domestic sewing machine you'll baste your layers and uh, you can do all kinds of different quilting designs. Uh, you can echo the words if you want. You could do a cross hatching. You could do a stitch in the ditch around the four inch border and do some kind of little design in each one of the blocks. I really had all this stuff planned out. Lots of frilly uh, free motion quilting in the negative space and that white background, but to save time on this quilt, let's just do the pantograph. I'm going to move you over to the long arm as I quilt uh, a little bit on this quilt so you can see what that looks like. So here we are as we have begun quilting the first row at the very top of my quilt. See that praying hand? Isn't that just so pretty? Oh, I love that so much. So on this quilt, I'm using a YLI universal thread. Uh, white in the top and the bottom. It is a polyester thread. It does have a matte finish, so it's not shiny. And really the only parts where you're going to see the thread are in this dark blue background. And then in the rest of the quilt, you're just going to see the quilty texture because the thread just sort of blends in with the rest of the fabric. See that hand right there? Isn't that so pretty? So in between the hands on this pantograph, it just does a loose meandering, kind of big. And then it moves over, does the meandering, and then starts to stitch another hand design. So my job really is just to be a quilt monitor, <laughs> make sure that there's no thread breaks, that the tension stays right, and uh, make sure I don't run out of bobbin thread. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is going to be so gorgeous. So we'll move down to the next row. I'll advance the quilt and you can see a portion of this being quilted out and we'll speed it up a little bit. So once the light from the machine moves over, you can see the texture of the hand. See that? Isn't that so pretty? Just blends in with that white background. And although I am a little disappointed that I'm not doing a lot of free motion custom quilting on this quilt, I kind of really love this pantograph and I'm super pleased with the way it's turning out. And uh, so I couldn't be more happy. I'll continue quilting the rest of this quilt off camera and then we'll meet back and I'll show you how much binding you need to prepare for this quilt. Once you're done with all of your quilting, we're going to square up this quilt and prepare our binding. So for the binding, you need half a yard of fabric. And from that half a yard, you're going to cut seven strips that are two and a half inches wide. You'll attach all your strips, make your binding, and attach it to your quilt. And guess what? You're all done. But don't forget about your quilt label. I think it's really important to document your quilts with your name and the date and any other important information that you want to add to your quilt. Make sure to add that quilt label on there. And that's it, y'all. That is everything to make 
this quilt and it's been so much fun bringing you along in this process. I finally have my blue and white quilts. I finally have a quilt with the praying hands uh, design quilted into my quilts. And here's another thing. I pieced the backing on this, <laughs> which comes as a huge surprise to a lot of you, especially those of you in the creative crew over on Facebook. You know I've been talking about it for a long, long time. I use the leftover fabric from the front to make my backing large enough to use on the back of this quilt. And I'm kind of proud of myself, actually. So it has been so much fun making this quilt with you. And even if you don't make this particular quilt using this particular pattern, I hope that it's inspired you to create something of your own and uh, to give you that boost to get started. I think that's awesome. Now, before we go, I want to make sure that if you want to share your pictures of your quilt, you know how to get in touch with me. Down below, there's a link to Facebook. You can visit my business page. You can share pictures over on the creative crew. Those links are down below. If you don't do Facebook, my Etsy link is down below and you can send me a message and attach a picture that way. I would love to see it. Now, before we close for today, I just want to give a special shout out and thank you to my Patreons. Thank y'all so much. I'm having so much fun with you over there. And don't forget, this is your free pattern. Go get it. And I'll see you on Patreon for our workshop on the 20th. All right, everybody. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. And I'll see you really soon. Bye.